Hello friends, today we are going to see the next topic that is forces in space. Sometimes it is also called as space forces. Now what are forces in space? We have seen forces in two dimensional structures or on a single plane. Now we have forces in three dimensional structures or space forces. So what are space forces and what is required to solve space forces we'll see in detail how to go about it. The first part that we'll be concentrating is to find out the resultant of a force in the space or number of forces in the space and then after that we are going to do something which is related to equilibrium what we have already done. In this case we'll be having forces in the space and we have to find out the equilibrium condition for those forces. Now this is my space diagram which I am having. Now if I say there is a force passing between two points say A and B. The coordinates for A are given as whereas for B now what we need to do had this been for example had this been a case wherein the force is acting on one single plane now if you just try to visualize this force on the exact plane so it would have been very simple for us we have seen the rectangular components how we how we take the rectangular components of a force inclined at some angle and then we try to find out the resultant now in this case what is happening is i'm having the third axis as well so what I need to do in this is I need to find out the components along each axis. The same thing what we were doing in two dimensional. We need to find out the fx component, fy component and the fz component also. So before that we need to brush up a few small basic concepts of vectors. Now as we know force is a vector quantity so I can say that it is passing through A, I mean uh, going through A and B. So this is the line of action of the force. So I'll say this is my force and to represent this force in the vector form, I write it as F bar. Now how do I represent a force as a force vector in three dimensional structures? To do that, I should be knowing the magnitude of the force and the unit vector the unit vector for through which this force is passing that is the unit vector of this AB. So if I get a dot product of these two values I mean two uh, entities then I can say that the force vector has been calculated. So I'll just sh show you how to go about this. We all know how to calculate a unit vector. So this is my unit vector for AB. That is pretty simple. Whatever values you have, like in this case, the force is starting from A, going through B, the coordinates of A are x1, y1, z1, and for B it is x2, y2, and z2. So to find out the unit vector, what we do is, we subtract from this ending point to this original point or the originating point. 
So it is x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1 and z2 minus z1. This is very important. If we take this in the reverse direction, then the whole magnitude goes in the negative side. That means the force cut direction changes. The force which was acting in this direction becomes a force acting towards the origin. So that is which we don't want to take place right now. So it is always you have to take care check the direction of the force it is going from a to b so we subtract it like b minus a so you have to take care of that now this is how i have got the unit vector now to get the magnitude So this is how we find out the force vector. If we are given the magnitude, we have to just take the dot product and find out dot product with the unit vector and we can get the force vector. So this is how we find the force vector if the, two, uh, if the force passing through two points is given to me. Now just in case, if it happens that it says the force is acting in this three-dimensional space but the two points through which it is passing is not given to me but in case in, instead of that the angles are given to me so for example if i say the angle that this force is making with the x-axis angle with the z-axis and angle with the y-axis so if i know theta x, theta y and theta z. These are the angles with respect to the axis that I'm having. I need to find out the force vector. Again, I'll be knowing the force magnitude. Just to find out the force vector, I'll take It is F cos theta x i, F cos theta y j plus F cos theta z k. So this is how I can calculate the force vector if the angles are given to me. This I can simplify and write as F x i plus fyj plus fz k this is my force vector i can simplify this as cos theta x is nothing but fx by f similarly cos theta y is fy by f and cos theta z is fz by f. You all should remember that there is one identity that we had studied and that is This is a very important identity just in case if some of the angles or one of the angle is not given to us. So we can find out that angle by using this identity. Now we have seen that how to find the force vector. Now if I want to find out the moment of a force about a point what do we do for example in the case of a two-dimensional figure or two-dimensional force if we have to find the moment we used to just take the perpendicular distance and multiply it now in this case in space forces what we need to do is we need to first find out the force vector as you have seen how we calculate the force vector then we have to find out the position vector of the force with respect to the point about which i want to take the moment now 
if I just say For example, this force is acting in space, passing through points A and B. I need to take the moment of this force with respect to point C. The coordinates of these points will be known to me. Like in this case, I'll say x1, y1, z1. So, if this is the case, then what we have to do is we first need to find out the force vector. Finding out the force vector is a simple task now. What we do is we know the magnitude and we multiply this magnitude or we take the dot product of this magnitude with the unit vector or through the points, uh, I mean through the points which, uh, through which the force is passing. So, that is F bar is nothing but magnitude dot product a b now once i get this what i need to do is i need to find out the position vector of this force with respect to this point now i can find out the position vector anywhere on this line of action so if i know the point over here the coordinates over here i can find the position vector with respect to this point if i know this point i can find the position vector with respect to this point but right now i know these two points a and b so this is my position vector r now what I need to do in this case, I need to take moment about C. So the line of action goes from C to A. So when I'm taking the position vector, I write it as R C A. So when I'm writing the position vector, it becomes X1 minus X3 I y1 minus y3 j plus z1 minus z3 k now once we get this position vector i'll simplify this i'll write it as r x i r y j r z k now all i need to do is i need to take the dot product of this position vector and the force vector so that happens to be moment about c for the force and since i'm finding the force vector bar and it is the cross product so i'll write r cross f which is nothing but This is how we calculate the moment of a force about any point. Now, this was a case wherein I am taking the moment about a point. If I want to take the moment of this force about a line, Now, if I want to find out the moment of this force AB with respect to this line, we have to again follow the same procedure with one extra step. That is, we first find out the force vector, then we find out moment 
of the force with respect to any one point on the line that is say point P in this case. Now once I get this, I need to find out the unit vector of the line and then I'll take moment of this force about this PQ by taking the dot product of this four moment vector and this unit vector. So that is nothing but So this is how we calculate the moment of a force about a line. Now this is the basic that we have been doing. Now if I want to find out the resultant of a force, it is same as what we were doing in two dimensional structures. For example, if I have n number of forces acting, so in this case all I need to do is to find out the resultant it will be the summation of all the force vectors. For example, if I'm having three forces acting, I'll first find out those force vectors, that is each force vector. And I'll take the algebraic sum of that. So this is how I can find out the resultant. Now this resultant, will be having the three components Rx, Ry and Rz. Now once we have got the resultant, we can think about equilibrium as well. In two dimensional structures uh, for, for the force system, we have seen that the equilibrium condition was for x-axis and the y-axis or the horizontal direction and the vertical direction. Now in this case since we are having a three-dimensional space force equilibrium condition all the forces in the x-direction should be zero summation of all the forces in the y direction should be zero along z also zero then moment should be zero along each axis so this is the equilibrium condition so we have seen that how to find out the resultant of a space force and the equilibrium condition for space forces. So this was the introduction part for forces in space. Now using these basic concepts, I'll take a few examples or numericals wherein you can see how to use these concepts and find the forces resultant or the equilibrium conditions. I hope you enjoyed watching this introduction. Thank you.